I'm Amar Gautam. Um, we opened uh, Amanda Mar, my wife, and I opened the restaurant at the end of November of 2019, so just uh, four months ago. Opened exactly actually on November 26th, but the production of the restaurant had been ongoing for about three or four months. Um, so the food is American. Um, we would say sophisticated comfort food. Uh, it is seasonally based, um, although we haven't changed the season yet because we've you know been closed. But um, and the vibe of the restaurant, I would say we want you to feel um, very at home. It's got an uh, organic woods and um, soft colors, soft colors, and it's very bright during the day when we have uh, brunch going. And then at night, we turn the lights down, some music and uh, yeah, just a, a, a comfortable place where you could come and have a really great meal with friends. So we were introduced to share my meal, uh, I'd say the beginning of March, at the beginning of what was supposed to be Princeton's restaurant week. We hosted a little event for all the people participating and Share My Meals was there and um, they gave a little talk about who they were and who they and what their what their mission was. So fast forward two to three weeks and we are, you know, Amar and I are having a conversation about closing down the restaurant and doing takeout. We'd already decided that we were going to continue to make family meal, which is the meal we provide for our employees throughout the period that we were closed. And so that way, you know, at least if we couldn't necessarily pay everyone for the duration, we could at least give them a meal. We had planned on that. And then Amar said to me, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could find someone um, to help? You know, we're already doing these meals. It can't be that much more work to do more. Can't we find an organization to partner with? And I remembered share my meals from the couple weeks before we emailed and um, it took off from there. And so now, you know, I'm, 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 Frankly, I'm home with the kids most days now. We have the three kids at home. But Amari's there every day making meals um, and helping to prepare and get out the meals for Share My Meals. And we're also doing um, Princeton Nursery School on Wednesdays. We're doing that as well. And so we were able to keep some staff on. We paid uh, our staff for a few weeks, um, but then ultimately had and thought it was best if we um, lay them off so that we could then, you know, hopefully they can take advantage of uh, the employee unemployment packages. And then going forward, you know, we're hoping, um, hopefully, with this uh, new payroll protection program, that we'll be able to hire back at least some of the staff um, in the near future. So, yeah, but so we've been doing Share My Meal six days a week. Yeah, we, we started off with just, I think, um, 50, 50 meals. And then we moved to 75 meals. And then I think about a week ago, or we're now up to 100 meals six days a week. Um, and for us, you know, there was this sense of we want to help people who need food, right? So how do we go about figuring out that process? And, you know, it gets complicated. You know, I, I don't know how to figure that out. And then Amanda, obviously, you know, a bell went off in her head and she thought of you guys. And we went to your website. And you're helping the exact people who we wanted to help. So rather than us trying to figure it out, you're able to, you know, we were able to partner with you. And I think it's a great partnership because I've got some talented people and I've got this massive kitchen and we can get food and you know the people who need it. So I think that's, it, it's a great partnership where we're both, you know, doing our share and, and helping people who need it. If you're tired of arguing with strangers on the internet, Try talking with one of them in real life. Welcome to Back in America, the podcast. I am Stan Bertolo and this is Back in America. Today I'm speaking with Isabel Lambotti, the president and co-founder of Share My Mails. Share My Mails is a non-profit organization that fights food insecurity in Princeton by recovering meal surplus. Isabel, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, sure. So my name is Isabel Lambotti. Um, I'm from Belgium. Uh, I grew up in, in Belgium and I stayed there for 35 years. Um, I worked uh, for uh, Abbott Laboratories for 10 years 
in Belgium and I've been lucky to encounter my husband. He was also working uh, for Abbott Laboratory at that time, never in the same country as, as me, but uh, we had the chance to meet each other uh, during uh, international meetings once every year. But finally, <laughs> we, we decided that it was worth it to, to get married. So um, I, I resigned and, 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 and I, I follow him um, in different countries of the world because of his position. He had to move from one country to another time. So when we got married, we went to Portugal. Then two years after, he joined um, Bristol Mayo Squibb when we went to Italy where I had the chance to have two wonderful children. I must say that having children in Italy was probably the best thing of my life because the way the people look at children and the way the even the pregnant women I are seen in Italy is much, much nicer than in the north of Europe. Unfortunately, we had to leave Italy after three years and we, we moved to Paris. And at that time, I was able to uh, find a, an interesting job as a consultant in, um, in the pharma industry as well, um, dealing with uh, managing infant nutrition, which was uh, something that I was very used to because at Abbott, I was in charge of the nutritional business. And I was very, very happy because at that time, I Children were uh, a little older. I could manage that work mostly part time, but it was a very good balance between family life and, and work life. And after that, we, we we moved to the US, and here I am. I mean, a new life uh, at the beginning, kind of a cultural shock because even though we think we we live the same way, we have access to the same products and shops and and everything. Uh, the culture is definitely very different. So, Isabel, I think it's important for the listener to understand, as a disclaimer, that I am a member of the board of trustee of uh, Share My Mail. We met last year after you posted a message on a WhatsApp group asking for help in, in marketing. That's how we got introduced and uh, that's how I discovered this uh, amazing non-profit that you've created. Can you tell us a little bit more about the main idea behind Shamai Mills? So I've been working for almost four years with Liliana Morinilla, and I've been working with her at a food pantry on every Wednesday with the objective of distributing food coming from a food bank to the people in need in the Princeton community. By doing that, I've had the opportunity to meet this community, to understand that they were really in need for food. We, we have seen more and more people in need. At the same time, I have been shocked by the, or, I mean, surprised or disappointed sometimes by the, the quantity or the quality of the food that we received. So it was most of the time not sufficient or uh, sometimes the quality was not good enough to be distributed. So I was kind of uh, concerned uh, about how could we help these people to be able to distribute them uh, healthy meals and healthy food on a more regular basis. So I've been thinking and I came up with an idea that all the big corporations as well as the university, which are uh, located here in Princeton, organize so many events and, and, and parties where uh, there is a lot of food and most of the time a lot of this food goes wasted. Uh, so I started making some research and, and I found out that in fact in the US we know that more than 40% of the, the food produced is never consumed and never used. So that helped me to, to come out with an idea that we could probably think about an, an option to recover the, the un, uh, unused and meal surplus that are produced by this, uh, for these special events and distribute them uh, to the people who are in need of food. So kind of uh, rebalancing an equation between the food waste and the food demand. So making sure that we reduce the food waste and, and, and um, giving the, the, this food to the people who really need healthy food. So concretely, can you tell us how you operate? The organization started delivering food to the community last uh, January. You partnered with one of the eating club of Princeton University, Tigers Inn. Uh, take us through a typical pickup and delivery process. 
Okay, so we started with uh, one of the eating clubs of the Princeton University. So the food that they uh, cook and prepare every day, which has not been exposed to the public, um, is put in trays that we as an organization provide, which are uh, non-disposable trays because we wanted to stay eco-friendly. And they put uh, meals for a family of five. Um, containing protein, vegetable, and carbohydrates. So each tray contains a healthy meal for a family of five people. Then when, when the food is ready, uh, they call us and we pick up the food, the trays. We put these trays in insulated bags and we deliver uh, within less than 60 minutes to the family who are uh, enrolled in our program. So at the beginning, we had 15 families. And from the time we started, at the beginning of January, we have now uh, reached 40 families that are served by uh, Share My Meals. And how do you determine who the families are? Okay, so this is a very good question. Um, we have the chance to have um, Liliana Morinilla in our team, and she's the outreach person in the public school. So she is really aware of the community who is uh, in need. They make the request to Liliana. And so when we know that these people are really in need, we, we incorporate them in our, in our program. Hello? Hey, Patty. Hi. Yes, hi. hi. How are you? I'm good. Is now a good time? Good. Yes, yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. Patty Yates is a Share My Meals recipient and community leader. Patty, can you tell me how Share My Meals has been helping the community? People who I have passed out the meals to really, really enjoy the meals and they appreciate them all very, very much. And I think that this was the best uh option that oh, not option but the best thing that they could you know do for people at a time like this and and to all the people who are volunteers and and don donators you know we truly truly do appreciate this and we just there's not enough words to even say how much we appreciate and how much every all the residents on clay street appreciate it So, yeah, tell me a bit more about who, um, whom you are passing the meals to, you know, who, who to, are those I pass person? them to seniors. I also pass them to families who I know uh, maybe might be working just one day a week now. And I pass them to uh, families that have been laid off. So I take turns passing the five meals around. Obviously, the business community in Princeton has been extremely impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. Can you uh, tell me what you know about this topic and how much of an impact it has had on the, on the community? It's devastating. The community, all the you know, businesses really have closed down. So I'm Michelle Perrin-Lambros and a Princeton native, and I have been recently uh, on Princeton Council starting in January. I'm recently elected. And so I am someone who is very involved in the business community as well as in the uh, on the council now. Um, most of the restaurants are completely shuttered. Some are trying to stay open and do uh, takeout and delivery, which is working for some of the more casual dining restaurants. But for the larger chain restaurants, most of them are all uh, closed right now. So it's, it's been very, very difficult. My name is uh, Michele Moriello. Here in the United States since 1997, I come from another country, Italy, and I've been uh, uh, working on the restaurant uh, uh, business, I want to say, almost all my life. I started when I was very young with my cousins. How long have you had the restaurant in Princeton? In Princeton is uh, 15 years. Since, uh, yeah, since April 1st of 2005, we just turned 15 years of anniversary. I uh, doubled my business since uh, I started in 15 years. Just now, I was thinking, um, I had the pleasure this year to spend my uh, holidays uh, in Italy uh, back in uh, uh, December after, uh, af after 23 years when I left because I never had the opportunity to, to go back for Christmas. And I was thinking how I, I was uh, thankful for the business that I had because it was doing so great. I had a, a beautiful uh, group of people working with me. And I couldn't be more happy than I was. 
then all of a sudden, um, I remember in December hearing some, starting some news about the, the uh, COVID-19 in China, breakdown in China. And I got, I was going to start to get a little worried. Then in January, when I came back from my vacation, I heard that things were moving around in the world and I got even more afraid. And um, then after, um, in the beginning of January, I already started to think that sooner or later this virus would be here in the United States too. And I got started to get prepared. Like I told all my um, co-workers to be ready, save your money because we're probably going to lose our job. We're going to lose a, we're going to be closing the restaurant and and everything happened. So um, what I did after that, well, I closed my restaurant, but I I, I couldn't uh, just sit down and still look around what's going on. And and what I did, I tried to, I am trying to uh, help other people. There are two co-workers that um, uh, take the, the challenge with me. All three of us uh, promise ourselves that we never, never, never be in contact with uh, other people. That's why I try to stay away with everybody. My restaurant is locked. Nobody's allowed inside. And uh, we're just moving on. Every day we go to the restaurant. We cook for uh, approximately 150 people. So I'm also helping uh, the uh, 25 doctors that are working uh, in uh, Princeton Hospital. Before the, um, this whole lockdown, we had a few exposure to the, the public. We had been invited to some meetings where we had the opportunity to present, share my meals and our activities and operation. So when the lockdown came out unexpectedly, we have been contacted by some restaurant or some of the farm in the area asking if we were interested to recuperate uh, their food surplus. So for a couple of weeks, we have been uh, recovering all the surplus of these uh, different generous donors. And we have been offered by two restaurants in Princeton, uh, La Mezzaluna and uh, the Meeting House. They offer us to, to cook for free by using their uh, stocks of food. And that was an option, a good option for them to, to make a donation to the community, but at the same time, to, to continue to pay some of their staff members. That was the first step, the first phase of the COVID crisis, which was kind of very um, easy in, in one sense because it didn't cost us uh, anything. So the thing is that after a while, they run out of inventory, so they didn't have any, any food surplus in their fridge. We, we had anticipated that and we have negotiated with them the option of cooking for us to continue to provide the same quality of service and the same healthy meals every day to the family that are in our program by paying them a fixed amount of money, which is $5 per meal, in order to, to continue with, with the program. And we have been also very lucky because here in Princeton, we have been helped by so many individuals and also we are also connecting with a big organization and foundations and we receive quite a lot of uh, support from them as well. So the idea, if I understand it properly, is that uh, through the donation that Shamai Mail receives, we are going to be able to pay the restaurant that are working with us not only to cook their, their meal, but also to pay a limited amount of staff, right? Yes, that's exactly that. It has to be a win-win situation where they, they stay active. They could pay uh, a few of their staff members. So it means that we these people will not become additional people needing for, for food because we know that the people who work in this restaurant are also the same, the same people who, who would be in very difficult situation if they lose their job. So how do you make sure that... Uh with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, you keep on operating without endangering not only your volunteers, but also the member of the community which you serve. Yes, and that, that's, very, that's very key. And I'm glad that you asked that because it's for us a top priority. The volunteer goes uh, alone to the restaurant, which has prepared the, the trays on a table. 
So there is no contact with the people in the restaurant because the trays are waiting for us and we know exactly at what time. So there is no no waiting time. So the volunteers uh, put the trays in their insulated bag and then in, in their trunk. They drive to the, the families where uh, that has been assigned to them and they put the trays in front of the door, usually on a chair on a small table. Uh, without knocking at the door or without any contact with the, the doorbell or anything. When the tray has been delivered, the volunteer goes back to his or her car and calls the family saying that the food has been delivered. At that time, the family, the people can open the door, take the food and the trays and, and close the door. And then the volunteers go away, making sure that um, he, he has seen the, 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 the family taking the food. So this is really safe. And I must insist also that our volunteers are wearing gloves and masks. Okay, good. Are you looking for more volunteers at the moment? I would say yes and no. Um, my response is quite ambiguous. I would say that at the beginning, we were so concerned about the, the virus and, and the the type of restriction and precaution we, we have to take. So we were kind of afraid to include too many people. But now that we see that the, the process is really safe and that, I mean, we, we have taken all the precautions, uh, we could definitely incorporate more volunteers. And, and also we have made sure that the, the route that they have to follow is, is really well organized in the sense that they when they go, they always use the same route and they go in the same neighborhood. So they don't waste too much time. And usually we try not to ask them to deliver to six families in one uh, delivery. Okay. How long uh, does a t delivery typically take? So ideally, it wouldn't have to take more than 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, there are many organizations and charities in Princeton. What synergy with other charities have you have you developed? Now that we are in this, I mean, crisis situation, I must say that I'm really amazed and very happy to see how close are all this organization, which is other. So the municipality organized every Tuesday a very interesting meetings where we are all present and share our experience, what we do, or we have adapted our uh, operation in order to to serve better the community. So I must say that, no, I really feel that there is um, a real sharing of experience and, and, and that we all share the same purpose and, and we are helping each other. So we have partnering with uh, Arm in Arm. We have also uh, sent a lot of uh, food to um, the Princeton Nursery School. So we, we, we all try to, to work together. Mm -hmm. And looking back at your experience creating this, uh, this organization, what are some of the key learning and what makes you happy looking back at what you've done? Um, the first thing is I, I feel uh, and I see that it's really useful. So that's the, the first motivation. I, I'm very glad to see that there is very good uh, reaction of the community who wants to help by giving uh, time or giving money. So that's a proof that it's not just a good idea on the theoretical aspect, but also a good idea uh, on the reality. So this is definitely something that's important. Uh, the other thing is more probably spiritual. I don't know if I can say spiritual, but uh, I, I like to be useful and, and I, I like to do something for other people. My children, no, they, they, they don't need me as much as before. And I think I have a, a lot of energy. I have a lot of ideas. And, 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 and I think that's for me the only way to, to feel, uh, I mean, useful. Uh, and to I, I need to have a purpose in my life, otherwise I I depress. <laughs> mm. Okay, and and finally, and I just have two more questions for you, Isabel. Is what do people sometimes don't understand about Chamay Mills? What they, they probably don't understand it's maybe the difference between uh, Share My Meals and other organization. And obviously, what I see as the main difference is that we provide meals. Uh, healthy meals and that we provide it at home and that we provide it for a family. So it's really a community, uh, a community program. And, and the, the, the sharing is also something important because what we really wanted to create at the beginning, it's, it's a movement. It's not something that just go from one, 
one place of town to another one. It's really to to get the people involved, like the volunteers, like the donors. Yes, we, we wanted to create a movement, and I think we are, I mean, in a good position to reach that okay. objective. Okay. And finally, the last question I always ask in back in America is, what is America for you? Hmm. What is America for me? So when I came to America, it was supposed to be a, a short-term experience. But when I understood that uh, America was not uh, just an experience of two years, but an experience of uh, maybe a permanency, it was a way to reorganize my life. So that gave me the incentive to really think about what I wanted to do and the way I wanted to do. So in my previous career, when I was in charge of nutrition, for a uh, pharmaceutical uh, laboratories, I was doing marketing and, 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 and sales and business. And this was at some point of my life, and especially because my husband was making a wonderful career, I, I thought that I had to, to think differently and to put my energy in something different. So we have been lucky at that time. We made a, a trip to India, and I really fell in love with the foundation that we visit over there foundation that provide um, after-school program to underprivileged children in Rajasthan, in a small town in Rajasthan. So w when I came back from that trip, I really started thinking about how I could help remotely this organization, the Tushita Foundation. That was really the start of my new life. I did that for six years, and that has really changed my life and changed my philosophy of life and what I had to do at this point of my life. I, I reached an age where I really wanted to be um, to have a purpose, and the time that I dedicated to the Tushita Foundation was, and is still because I'm still involved and very active with the Tushita Foundation, um, is really something that that really gave me the kick for a new orientation in my in my professional life. Because I, I I can say even though it's volunteering, the rules are always the same. You have to 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 have a good networking of people. You have to uh, have good ideas and be able to implement these ideas. Like for the Tushita Foundation, because we have both uh, scientific backgrounds, my husband and I, we decided to organize. Every year, a uh, health camp for the children. So we have 300 children at the Tushita Foundation. And so we check their uh, general uh, health status every year. Uh, at the same time, for the, the foundation, uh, I'm the connection person uh, with the, the, the American University to recruit volunteers. And because we have volunteers that dedicate more than, than 10 months over there, we, we have very selective and, and high demanding program. So um, it takes a lot of my time. But from, from, from the time I, I got involved in the Tushita Foundation, it really gave me a, a new Uh, style of life. Uh, I have been also much more in touch with the Indian community. And when I say that America gave me this new start, I must say that uh, even more uh, right now with the Share My Meals initiative, I feel that all my, my skills, the one that I've developed during my real professional career in the pharma industry are, are very useful um, in the in this structure because we have to create we had to create a business plan we are to make sure that we are um, I mean financially sustainable to work as a team and in in the team the, the, the wonderful thing is that everybody has his own skills and really well adapted to the the, the project that we have developed so it's it's a wonderful um, teamwork and I really thank all the people who, who jump into the project with me because without them uh, I couldn't do anything. Thank you so much Isabel and congratulations on your work. Thank you very much Stan. It's a pleasure to work with you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.